Sure. Um, so broadly, there are two kinds of systems in the world. There are many party systems and there are two party systems. And the, uh, our, our English cousins, both England, Canada, Australia, um, India, tend to have uh, majority rule elections uh, rather than proportional elections, and that ten tends to lead them to have two sort of competing parties. So in England, you know, it's been, you know, since the 20s that, uh, that anything, anybody other than Labour or uh, the Conservatives have, fo have formed a government and gotten a Prime Minister and a Cabinet uh, and so on. And so in that way, it's very much like ours, and they have problems very much like ours as well. There's one lesson to learn from them, um, and that is that uh, the, the two parties at various times in their history, recent history, were criticized for being too extreme. Um, the Conservatives under Thatcher, um, uh, the, the Labor Party until the coming of um, um, Gordon Brown and uh, and his predecessor, <laughs> I'm blocking on his name right now, um, uh, and uh, and what they did was they moved, they, they took a much more moderate stance within the range of opinion within the Labor Party, they took a much more moderate stance, and that's what's happening now in the Conservative Party, a more moderate leadership, even within the same range, um, a less extreme and a more moderate leadership has, has softened some of the edges Otherwise, it's a system in many ways very similar to ours, um, and uh, the degree of differences are really quite similar between the two parties. If you go to other systems um, in which there are multiple parties, um, it's odd, but it still tends to break down that two parties generate most of the leadership of the system, even though there are multiple parties uh, around. So, for example, in Israel, which has a election laws that should lead to the largest number of parties, and indeed there are quite a large number of parties in that system, um, for many years, Labour and Likud um, were the only source of prime ministers, leaders of the, of the country, and they took opposite positions, and it looked kind of like a two-party system embedded in a, in a multi-party system in which there were Many people had voices in the Knesset, their, their Congress, but only two were effectively governing the country. <laughs> not, not, not easily, right, and not in the short run. Um, um, the principal, so the principal problem is that, is not, it, so we had two things that happened. One of them was just a sorting. I talked about Southern Democrats essentially, you know, in the gain the Republican Party. In some sense, that's just taking, you know, members of Congress who were painted blue and we repainted them red. Um, and in New England, you just did the reverse. You know, red, you painted blue. But, but, um, and, and that's just a resorting and that's fine and everything would be, you know, much easier uh, if that was the only thing that happened. The thing that got more problematic was that it became harder and harder for moderates to win elections. And so not only did you sort people differently into reds and blues, but you moved them apart. And so you, left, you, you took out uh, 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 a, a range for moderates. There's very, very few moderates. Um, now that's why people are so focused on, for example, people like Olympia Snow. Um, she's one of the few... Um, you know, Republicans from a basically Democratic era area, and thus has the kind of appeal that can go. You know, she can win elections um, as a Republican in what might otherwise be a Democrat area because she's one of the few people there in the center, and there and there are just so few of them. And that's that's been the difficult part. The question is, how would you how would we get a a viable center back? Um, and that's a very difficult uh, uh, question to to figure out. The difference between the 60s and now, and in, another difference between the 60s and now, was that Republicans and Democrats divided on some issues. Other issues, they were all intermingled, and you know, Republicans and Democrats were on the same side, opposite sides, all, all mixed up, and they were not partisan issues. Now, virtually every issue is partisan. Um, uh, and uh, and the, that, it extends to virtually everything that comes up has a partisan twist to it is, is very difficult. And we can't, um, 
you know, also forget the presentation of issues. Um, and that's, uh, you know, if you think back to the 60s and 70s, news was Walter Cronkite, you know, and he talked to everybody. Um, now, uh, the network news is a much less significant factor. It's not summarized by a Walter Cronkite kind of figure, and people have their own news to listen to, and it's as polarized as the rest of the world. So it's a very difficult thing. It's very difficult to see how to unwind it, except if new issues come, come up that do cut across party lines that would break open some of the, the sort of rigidities we ha currently have and allow for some movement to come up that provides for the possibility of at least some degree of overlap between the two parties, some common ground between the two parties, um, some way in which you could begin to see the value of, of, of bipartisan as well as uh, purely partisan uh, politics. Mm -hmm.